Today on Resource Review, we're evaluating three resources that might help with your continuing professional development at secondary level. They are a collection of booklets to help develop a professional learning community, a distinctive method of coaching, and a book about research engaged schools' experiences. Recommending today's resources, we have Vivian Porritt, who is head of CPD at the Institute of Education's London Centre for Leadership in Learning. On the panel today is Adam Arnold, who is assistant principal and training school manager at King Alfred's Specialist Sports College in Oxfordshire. And on the panel also Alan Mills from the Specialist Schools and Academies Trust. And our resource investigator Matthew Tosh has been out on a mission to see what teachers think of our resources. So Vivian, your first resource for us today is the Professional Learning Community's source materials. What do you actually get in this pack and why do you like it? Um, what you get is a set of really practical ways of investigating how the school currently works at the moment and it's the interrelationship between the learning of the adults in the school, the staff and the children that really is the hallmark of a professional learning community. It enables people to work in pairs, in teams, in groups, or as a whole school staff um, in lots of very focused, very practical ways. It's really grounded in the reality of the classroom. And what I like about it is that grounding, but also the fact that people can work in their own way. OK, well, thank you very much. Our resource investigator, Matthew Tosh, went to visit Steve Bright and his NQT colleagues at George Green's Secondary School in Tower Hamlets, East London. Professional Learning Community's Source Materials is a collection of activities and guidelines in booklets designed to help you maintain and implement a learning community in your school. It comes under a collection of five broad categories. We've got familiarisation and deepening understanding, audit, monitoring and evaluation, action and planning. If I just show you an example of one of the booklets, there are some case studies here that you can look at and then over the page we've got some questions for reflection and dialogue. Well now let's go over and see Steve Bright and his group of NQTs to see what they make of this resource. So good practice and innovation needs to be shared around the system and networks provide a system for doing this. I think you probably all agree that what we actually do already perhaps already does that. Can you tell us which booklet you've been using today? We've been looking at booklet four which is uh, about developing and extending learning communities. It okay. contains a range of resources look, looking at um, ways you might involve people from outside of the inner school community um, and within school to actually broaden learning across the whole spectrum. Each person had an individual piece of reading to do. They then moved to a group of experts in that particular area and discussed what they'd been reading, discussed the key kind of points that had come up. Instead of just having one school dealing with the community, why don't all the schools come together? Then moved back to their home group and talked about the, the different perspectives of what they've been looking at. We've got the um, yeah. learning community is actually devising ways area. of parents um, communicating with the school to get jobs. the great involvement with the school. Going to um, allowing them to access the scheme to work there's, and listen plans jobs online. Every single, every, it that? gives a broader view. It's not just looking at what goes on within our own school. It's actually looking at, at what goes on perhaps nationally and even internationally um, with regards to learning communities. I, th I think what the good things about it are that it doesn't actually say this is what you should do, this is what you know you need to do. It actually, it actually gives you um, some stimulus for thinking and for, for conversation, really. So, Steve, if I asked you to summarise the resource, um, I, th I think it's a very stimulating resource, and, get, and certainly as a school, um, given us kind of lots of food for thoughts, um, lots of ideas about how we might take things forward now um, with professional learning communities and develop those further. See, thank you very much. Okay. So, from a professional learning community to a professional in the studio, it must be Hermione. Well, Adam, what do you make of this resource? Uh, there was a lot of repetition as you get towards the end because a lot of the resources, you're quite right, you're, you're supposed to pick and choose from them. And there, there are some very good ideas for activities in there, uh, many of which are familiar, some of which less so. Overall, a very good resource, I thought, perhaps if you were a new CPD coordinator and you needed to shape the vision for your school, um, perhaps if you are experienced, it's useful uh, as an audit tool. Great. Well, Alan, what, what did you make of it? 
I feel a bit like a beginner's guide, uh, which could be very appropriate in certain schools. Having said that, I can see that in certain situations, you know, as, as in the VTR, we saw it being used very effectively, but it's just, it's just a bit of overkill, I think, for what's actually there. Great ideas, and from this particular professional learning community here, there were things there that I thought were very well defined, very useful, but you know, why not on the website? Well, the good news is it is on the web, um, so people can download the whole resource if they want, which I think I would agree with you. Is a, is a terrific way forward. I, I had a slight issue with the title, really, because when I first read it, I thought, have I missed some new status or some new initiative? Professional learning community. And I was slightly intimidated by what, what that might be. And as I began to read through it, it became clearer and clearer that actually what it describes is just a well-managed school that has a well-developed mm. CPD programme. Um, and I did have this slight sense of irritation that it was just relabeling something which is done anyway. Do you think it's guilty of that, Vivian? Um, I think the particular reason I like this is that it's reminding us that it is a community of learners, not just the adults or the it children. It is, but the title, Professional Learning Community, yes. perhaps excludes your support staff in the, in the title. I think I'd see support staff as part of the professional team in the school, though, very definitely. Mm. Well, titles aside, <laughs> I'm afraid it is time to move on now to Vivian's second choice of resource for us today. And this isn't a physical resource, no. Vivian. This is peer coaching, more of a methodology. Explain it to us. There is a wealth of untapped knowledge, effective practice within a school itself. So I would say one of the most important things um, a CPD leader in a school or a team of people in a school can do is actually find out what everybody already knows and put people together to help share that knowledge and learning. So that's what you mean by peer coaching, it literally is people in schools helping their colleagues? Yes, to investigate their own practice, to solve problems, to celebrate success, to even know what successes you're having and to look at how you can develop your own teaching and the learning of the children in even more effective ways, to just work together and collaborate with their learning. OK. Well, we sent Matthew Tosh to Chipping Norton School in Oxfordshire to see how the school's training coach, Sarah Northall, got on with peer coaching. Could I just check, is it a mixed ability group? Yes, or? it is. I was going to put the names up on the board, but actually it might be better if I have it set up before, before the lesson and maybe when they come in, possibly seat them in those yeah, already. And it, have you got any thoughts about how you'd get them into those <coughs> seats? Can you talk us through the session today, what you've done? Yeah, OK, it was the first time that the three of us had met together as, as one group. What we were trying to do was yeah. just to practice our coaching skills together, talk about the planning that we've done, and also to give each other a chance to have feedback on how we did as coaches as well. You're going to think about having them not just differentiated by outcome, you're actually going to look at differentiated yes. tasks for the for the three or four different groups that you're going to work with. The framework that we've got comes from the coaching suite that uh, the Department for Education sort of issued and it's sort of been amended and adapted for use in-house. So we ask at the beginning of the cycle that a simple log sheet is filled in which records who's in the trio, when the trio starts, what the focus is going to be and when they expect to complete so if I asked you to summarise peer coaching, what would you say? So much of what we do in schools is done on the hoof. And when we can actually deliberately make the chance to think about it, to reflect on it, to do what we always encourage student teachers to do, which is to be self-reflective in their practice, actually to give each other time and space to do that is just, just so valuable. And the feedback from those who've been involved in coaching is just, it's really good to talk. Well, thank you very much. So it's all about working together. And now to one of my peers, it's Hermione. Well, we just saw some peer coaching in one yes. school, but I was wondering, is this the type of thing that is necessarily confined to one school, or can it take place between a group of schools? Oh, it absolutely can take place across a group of schools. Um, in action learning sets, for example, people coaching across a group. And coaching is something that is becoming much more established in schools and much more popular as a professional development approach. Well, Adam, what do you think? Is this the kind of thing that you do in your school? We've done a little bit of it. I think where we have done it, it can be incredibly powerful. But it does require a considerable commitment of time and therefore money to make it happen. 
Yes, it should mm -hmm. be accessible to everybody. Yes. And, and again, going back to support staff, easier for them because then they don't have a timetable. Mm -hmm. Now, what about materials? Are there any formal materials that you think are needed to get this going in schools? The stacks are training out there, but a really good starting point is the NCSL website, which has some, again, very good downloadable PDF documents. Alan, what do you make of peer coaching? I do think that it's important to realise that people learn from other people's mistakes as well as other people's successes. And I think that's one of the, the best things of all, all communication between peers, whether it's in the same school, in the same authority or even in the same country, because you can see what's being done elsewhere and you can either say, wow, I can use that, or you can say, never in my classroom. And I think that's, sort of, that's what we, we do well as teachers. We do learn from each other. And, and maybe that's why peer coaching is very good, because you're, you're more ready to make discuss your mistakes with people that you're working with on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, thank you all very much. Now let's move on to your third choice of resource, which we have here, and it's called Postcards from Research Engaged Schools, a book. Now, explain this resource to us, Vivian. This resource shows people how 15 schools across the country, um, including secondary schools, have dipped their toes into an inquiry-based approach where they've worked again as a learning community and really found out things about their own practice that they, they weren't sure how to improve or move forward. And how do you envisage schools or teachers actually using this resource? Well, there's lots of ways in again. They could simply be read the case studies and be excited by what the schools have learned. Um, there's a checklist of ways to get started if you haven't been researched, engaged before. There's website references, there's lots of sources and also what it raises are the challenges for a school in engaging with research. Okay, well Alan, were you excited by this resource? I'm afraid I wasn't. I, I did think it was slightly, <sighs> slightly primitive in the way it's, it, it's set out. And I think it's unfortunate that this quite expensive book is produced in a way that is very lacking in stimulation. I mean there's good stuff in there but just you look at it and you think outdated and slightly sad. Adam, what did you think? Would you share that view? I think some of those points are valid. I think it, it does what it says on the, on the cover. They are postcards, they're very brief. It's appropriate if you're just thinking about dipping your toe into action research. It's a, it's a quick read, it's worth reading. Mm. You need to go a lot further. Uh, it, it really is just a starting point. And I agree, for £25 for, for that book, there are probably other resources you could use. Well, I think with the panel we're focusing maybe on the presentation and once they get past the, the cover in that way what I like about it is the fact that this is a really easy read, a very accessible resource so I think it's a simple way in deliberately to what people can see as quite a scary topic. Okay, well thank you all very much. That's all we've got time for today. But just to recap, the three resources that we've looked at were Professional Learning Communities Source Materials published by the DCSF Peer Coaching, arranged through your CPD leader. And Postcards from Research Engaged Schools, published by the National Foundation for Educational Research. For more information about the resources we've discussed, go to our website, it's teachers.tv forward slash resource review, or you can email us, resourcereview at teachers.tv. I'd like to say a very big thank you to our panel, to Vivian, to Adam and to Alan. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye-bye.